Hello everybody, how's it going? I am the Temeister, and welcome back to Downtown Timbuktun in another episode of this series. I'm super excited to be presenting this episode to you guys. Uh, basically, it is going to be a continuation of last episode where we got started with the Downtown Revitalization Project. And, uh, and this is just going to be a continuation of that, basically. So, in the last episode, we sort of focused on the, the shoreline of Timbuktun. So uh, we completed that, and in this episode we're going to move inland a little bit more, and I'm going to work on filling up much of the empty spaces that have been left in downtown. So uh, just as a little recap, basically what I have done, I gone ahead and did a giant cleanup of downtown, so I deleted a whole bunch of buildings that I thought were either outdated or they didn't fit quite right into the downtown area. and. Uh, I left the downtown with a whole bunch of holds. Um, so, you know, some buildings I really liked and I wanted them to stay in place. And, uh, you know, basically with the cleanup that I had done, there were a whole bunch of empty spaces and uh, empty lots in downtown. So I decided to sort of make an episode totally focused on filling in those areas and just sort of going over the entire downtown core as a whole. Uh, so, you know, detailing, plopping down some new things, some new parks, making use of some new assets and things that I've uh, found on the workshop lately. So, just doing a general update of downtown. Now, before we go any further, I have a cool little project I want you guys to do. So, I have this empty lot here. I just built a construction site. And basically, this is the finished downtown product. And I did on purpose to not develop this little plot of land here. And basically what I want you guys to do for this little project is pretend you're some sort of CEO or foreign investor or just a rich billionaire or something who has a vision and who wants to construct something in this little lot of land right here. So what I want you to do is comment down below and give me a little backstory of who you are and what your vision is for uh, this little lot here. So pretend you're some sort of CEO who wants to build luxury apartments or if you're uh, some sort of, I don't know, environmental protection council who wants to build a park there. Uh, you know, the choice is totally up to you. So hopefully a lot of you guys participate because what I'm planning on doing in the next episode is taking all of your submissions and making a poll out of them. So I'm going to allow the viewers who didn't comment down below to vote on whatever uh, submission they would like to see built in the next episode afterwards. So all of the voters will act as the sort of city council for Timbuktun. So with that being said, uh, comment down below guys what you would like to see me build and uh, hopefully a lot of you participate because I think it would be a pretty cool way to involve you guys into uh, the series a little bit more and to uh, shape the future of Timbuktun. So anyways, I tried to keep this episode as interesting and as less boring as I possibly could. So my general idea for downtown is, as you guys know, this entire city is built on like coastal, coastal cities such as Halifax, obviously, and Portland. And I've been spending a lot of time exploring on Google Maps around those cities and looking how their downtowns are sort of built and I've done a little bit of history research as well and learned how those downtowns have developed over time. And what's interesting, not as much in Portland, but in Halifax, it's definitely a, a, a really prominent feature. Uh, there is like a huge mixture of modern buildings, like 60s and 70s style buildings, you know, like big cement buildings, prefab kind of buildings. And then you have your old historic buildings that were built between like the 1800s and uh, and like mid to beginning of the 1900s. So it's it's a really interesting downtown in Halifax. It's it's not really something that I had noticed uh, before starting this series, but uh, having first of all gone to the city a couple of times and spending so much time on Google Maps, the city is is definitely unique in that sense. Whereas you have Portland, which a lot of people are familiar with. Um, you know, it's the, the downtown is a little bit less modern, I find, than Halifax. So a lot of the buildings 
even like the newer buildings, they're all built with bricks and they sort of, I'm not, I'm not sure if they've done this on purpose or whatever, but all the buildings sort of match a little bit more. So like have much more variety in Halifax, whereas Portland, everything is just sort of like the same theme, I suppose. So uh, I'm gonna base this downtown a little bit on both as I find that there's some interesting traits in uh, both downtowns. So like pretty much this entire city, I've been taking inspiration from mostly those two cities. If I was to compare Timbuktu's finished downtown between Halifax and Portland, I would definitely say that it's gonna be a lot more similar to Halifax's downtown, both in the way it looks and even like zooming out of the downtown core, the skyline is very similar as well. And this is one topic that I'm gonna go over in just a couple of minutes. So this is one trait that you're gonna see uh, by the end of this episode. In most cities around the world, you'll always have like your central business district right in the heart of the city. And this is where you typically find like your tallest buildings and your most densely populated parts of the city. And uh, of course, Halifax is no exception to this. And, and this is sort of the general rule that I always follow. However, a lot of smaller cities, I've noticed the skylines aren't as defined, I guess, as I always like Dallas keeps popping up to mind or, or no, I guess Toronto is not a good example. Toronto is all over the place now, but uh, but a lot of American cities, you know, it'll be like a huge flat suburban area. And then in the middle of nowhere, you'll have like a whole bunch of <laughs> I was about to say subscribers, skyscrapers. Uh, LA is a perfect example, you know, like you have like your classic LA skyline, a bunch of like flat suburban areas and then right smack dab in the middle of the city, you have a, a huge cluster of, uh, of super tall buildings. Um, so this is not going to be the case with Timbuktu. So in, in Halifax and Portland, uh, the skyline is sort of elongated and shortened, if that makes any sense. So, so rather than there being like just a huge cluster of skyscrapers in one area, downtown is going to be shorter, but it's going to occupy a lot more space. So essentially to do that, I'm going to move around a few skyscrapers that were previously in the city before, uh, some of the buildings that I really liked, and I'm going to be plopping some new taller-ish buildings, a um, little bit more outwards from the central business district. So. Uh, downtown is, is pretty unique in Timbuktu as there's a huge mesh of old like 1800 style wooden buildings and then right next door you have a modern skyscraper. So that is actually something that's commonly found in Halifax which is well which I always thought was quite interesting. Uh, so you know going back you have like that mesh of historical and modernism I guess. So nonetheless, I mean, I'm really satisfied with the way the whole skyline turns out. And, uh, you know, you guys will get to see that at the end of this episode, of course. Uh, so hopefully you guys react good. Um, I'm going to put $2.20 on the spot. <laughs> I, uh, I watched his uh, skyline or his sort of downtown revitalization project uh, with uh, Marble Mountain. And I, I guess he got a little bit of backlash with that one, so I'm gonna <laughs> hopefully not get the same sort of response with Timbuktu, but uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll uh, you'll like the result. On the uh, topic of functionality, um, I'm trying to make downtown as functional as possible, so I'm gonna be plopping down all the necessary amenities and services that uh, any city would have. So. Uh, just to catch you guys up a little bit for those of you who maybe have not watched the previous videos and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I had a little mishap with uh, Burton a couple of episodes ago where a big portion of the city was just dying. And that was because of the uh, No Problems mod and uh, my misunderstanding of it. <laughs> so um, basically with the like new Timbuktu or what I'm trying to do uh, recently is trying to make the city as functional as possible while you know keeping its realism and, and all that and uh, one of the things that I'm doing to do that is uh, 
making sure that the city is completely functional. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be popping some hospitals and police stations and stuff like that. So lately, I've been doing a lot of shopping on the workshop, and I found like a whole bunch of new stuff that is just out recently. Some old historic buildings that serve as, you know, post offices and um, police stations, fire stations, all sorts of stuff. Um, so they both function, and they function really good too. Most of them have like, you know, pretty good radius, and they have a whole bunch of uh, you know, like available fire trucks or police cars. So, you know, they, they're both functional to a very good level, uh, but they look really good and they fit right into the downtown area as well. So, uh, you might seeing, you might be seeing a couple of these buildings around town. So, forgive me if I'm seemingly all over the place with downtown. My strategy for developing downtown is. I'm basically just sifting through my menus, going through like my Rico menu, uh, going through residential, commercial, and industry. Well, not industry, but like offices. And I'm going through like the growable menu with the Find It mod. And as I see something that catches my eye in the menu, I'm gonna look for a location where I think that building would look pretty good. So. Forgive me if I'm like all over the place and I'm not focusing on one particular area at a time. Uh, there's a pretty good reason behind that. Oftentimes I'll actually go over an area that I've already completed. If I find like a building that I think would look better in uh, my menu or anything like that. So uh, this episode is no exception. Um, I've redone some small parts around downtown off camera after I had completed all of this footage here. Uh, nothing major. I mean, you guys probably won't even notice in the uh, the uh, the cinematics at the end of the episode. But you know, if you look close enough, you'll notice a couple of little minute details that I've gone over again. Uh, but it's all to to make the downtown look, I guess, as as pristine as I can possibly make it because. I do get quite uh, perfectionist with City Skylines. Sometimes it's a pretty bad thing because uh, I'll spend hours and hours on like little tiny locations. So uh, anyway, it's all in fun though. I've never like not had fun in City Skylines except when I have like crashing issues or something like that. Uh, sometimes I'll get a little frustrated, but whatever. It's part of the game. I mean, I guess you have to deal with it when you have over like 7,000 assets or something. I, I don't even know how much I have, but I need more RAM. That's my problem right now. RAM is uh, still pretty expensive. Thank you. 
like to educate people on different things. I may not be a very good educator. I have no idea. Like, I, I've never taught anything professionally or I don't know how good I am as a teacher. But one of my goals with this series is I'm hoping that somebody out there watches my videos and gets inspired to go out and build their own cities or you know people who are failing to find any creativity can watch my videos and and go about and build uh, a very uh, a city of their own so uh, you know that's why I always ramble on about you know how cities are developed in real life and how that corresponds with how I'm building the city in the game and I'm, I'm you know I keep rambling on about those types of things and you know the reason I'm doing that is first of all I enjoy it and second of all you know I'm happy if I can help anyone out there find inspiration and, and build uh, something unique of their own. At the end of the day I know it's just a video game whatever but you can almost look at it as like a sort of canvas and you can showcase your creativity. Uh, like I'm always on Reddit browsing the City Skylines uh, subreddit and you know some people like they they create things and they're proud to show it to everybody like there are even some creations like I, I don't want to put anyone down or anything like but some creations are not the prettiest but I just like the fact that the that person actually took the time to post their city and they're proud of it you know it's like their first interchange or something it's a whole jumbled spaghetti mess but you know what if it works and it's efficient and you know if the creator had fun building it and they're proud to show it off on on whatever platform like I'm all for that uh, so you know like like I said it's it's just a video game at the end of the day but at the same time it brings this sort of little niche community together and you know that's that's a lot of fun uh, when you can discuss things like that as we near the end of this episode, I'm going to let you guys watch me plop down and, uh, well, detail this nice park area, this nice plaza in front of this building. And um, I was struggling quite a bit at the start because I didn't have an idea on what I wanted this area to look like. So I was blindly plopping down different parks and random things, just hoping to get some inspiration. Uh, but at the end of it, I end up doing something that looks pretty good I guess uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so uh, but this is one small example of many many projects that I've done off-camera in terms of detailing so the reason I did that is after like redoing the entire downtown area I then had to detail all the nooks and crannies and stuff everywhere and it would have made for either like two pretty long episodes or one like way too long episode and I didn't want to bore you guys with that because I, I still want to move on to different projects and stuff so I decided to include this plaza as an example and uh, you know I've done a little bit and I've done multiple little plazas off camera uh, a little bit later on so uh, with all that being done, in the next episode, what I'd like to get into is Uptown. So, as I've mentioned, was it two episodes ago or one episode ago? I forget now. I think it was two episodes ago. Um, essentially, I wanted to expand outwards, but in order to do that, I needed to develop downtown because it's, it's a lot easier building outwards than it is like starting from suburbs and moving into downtown. It's, it's not really practical. Uh, so, we're pretty much at the uptown stage, and this is going to be the big blank area between the university and downtown. And uh, I've already started to build it. It's pretty much finished at this point. At the time that this episode is released, it'll probably be finished, and I'm going to start to edit the video, so you can expect it uh, pretty shortly. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with the rate uh, at which the uh, development of the city is coming along. Um, I'm starting to have some performance issues and I'm hoping that it doesn't get too bad as to where like the game starts to get unplayable. Uh, but we'll just have to see and worst case scenario I'll just dish out a couple hundred bucks and upgrade my system. <laughs> so uh, you just have to stay tuned for that. 
So again, guys, be sure to stay till the end of the episode because I'd love to show you how downtown has changed. Um, I'm going to do like a little before and after kind of thing so you guys can notice the difference. Uh, but yeah, I like it and hopefully you guys do too. So anyways, with all that being said, guys, if you like this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for much more content on the way. And one more thing that I'll add is if you guys haven't seen, uh, I have done a recent collaboration with Paradox Interactive and I have produced a tutorial on how to create a national park in the vanilla uh, version of the game. So, you know, for any new players out there who you know would like to play the game as it's meant to be played, uh, go ahead and check out that tutorial. And uh, I think I give a pretty good review on how to create a nice national park. Also, uh, one more thing. If you guys haven't already uh, bought the game or bought the, any DLC or any Paradox product whatsoever and you would like to, be sure to check down in the description of this video as I've provided affiliate link where you can go and purchase uh, City Skylines. Or you can go and purchase anything from the Paradox store. So that is it for me. I hope you guys liked the episode and until the next one, please take care.